In Flowers by Algernon by Daniel Keese, a 32-year-old mentally retarded man named Charlie Gordon undergoes a series of scientific experiments and surgeries in order to increase his intelligence. Um, so Charlie is the main character here, and at first he starts out working in a bakery, and he's constantly messed with and mocked by his peers because of his mental inabilities. But he goes to school and he works really hard because he always wants to be smart, not only so that people will stop making fun of him but and like to gain respect, but he also wants to be able to have friendships and emotional relationships with people, which he's not at the time able to have because he doesn't fully comprehend emotions and he doesn't understand them. And then also because the people around him don't look at him as socially equal or like as human as he is a lot of times. They look at him more of um, like as an animal or as an object. And then another main character they have is Alice. And Alice is his teacher. And from the very beginning, we know that Alice cares a lot about him because she talks a lot about how he really strives to um, learn and is working really hard. And then once he gets to the lab, um, she constantly is checking up on him, seeing how he's doing and... Even though Charlie doesn't really comprehend how much she cares about him, the author does give us hints by saying things that, like, there was a look of worry on her face before he was undergoing his surgery. And a look of worry shows that she cares about him and if you're worried about someone. And so that's one hint from the beginning that we know that she cares about him in a way that other people around him really didn't. And then another character that we have is Professor Nimmer, and he's a scientist in charge of the experiment that is designed to increase his mental um, intelligence. And he's arrogant, and he's an obsessed man, and he doesn't really treat Charlie with respect. He treats him a lot just like as a subject, and he doesn't think of him as a human, more just of a way of experimenting and trying to prove his point. And so he doesn't really respect him or ever take his emotions into account. And then another main character that we have is Dr. Strauss, and he's the neurologist and psychiatrist that performs tests on Charlie, um, both before, during, and then after the experiment. Um, at first to see whether or not he'd be a good test subject, and then throughout the experiment, he's um, taking tests and keeping track of his progress to see how successful he is. Um, another main character that we have that... Um, is a little bit different because he's a mouse, is Algernon. And Algernon's not only a character, really, but he's a big symbol in the book because he represents Charlie. And he um, shows us and is, like, foreshadowing the events that are going to happen to him. Um, Charlie, at first, he despises this mouse because he beats him at all of his social... Um, not social, but, um, like, at the experiments and when they're doing tests, like, to go through mazes, the mouse is always beating him. So, he kind of has, like, a deep-rooted hate for him at the beginning. But then after once, um, Charlie starts to gain intelligence, he starts to feel compassion for him. And just is saddened by the fact that he's treated, um, you know, he's treated, like, with no respect. And that he realizes that that's kind of how he was before. And... Once the mouse starts to revert back into its original stages and loses intelligence, he feels sorry because he sees how people are treating him badly. And even though he wishes people would treat the mouse with more respect because in the same way he wished that people would have treated him with more respect when he wasn't intelligent. Another main character that we have is Faye. And Faye is Charlie's neighbor. And um, at, Charlie's attracted to Faye, but doesn't really have a super strong emotional connection with her like he did with um Alice but Faye is important because she's really the main character that we see here that Charlie meets and knows completely in his intelligent state all these other people knew Charlie before but Faye didn't she's only known him as an intelligent man and so that's really important and that goes just to show more like how she's only knows the new Charlie she doesn't know the old one but um Charlie and Faye, he's attracted to her, but he never really loves her like he does um, learn to love Alice. And then another main character that we have here is Rose Gordon, and that's Charlie's mother. And at first, Charlie doesn't really remember a lot about her. He has no really strong recollection of his family because of his just, um, because he's not very smart. And he doesn't remember even his parents' names 
at first. And slowly throughout the experiment, he starts to gain more um, wisdom. And he starts remembering things and starts getting back memories from his childhood and from his early life. And he starts to remember Rose. But a lot of the memories that he, ha that he has of her, most of the memories actually are not good ones. A lot of them. And Rose is kind of like in denial that her, her son is not smart and... Like she says, he's not normal. And we know that she's in denial because he states how his mom, he remembers her saying, like, he's normal, he's normal. But then the father, Matt, just reminds her that, like, no, um, our son's not normal. And so she doesn't really like him for that. And they sent him off, and they don't really care about him, the family, as much. And um, also another thing that Rose did is she made him feel a lot of shame towards his sexuality, which is plays an important role later down throughout the book because even though Charlie um, gains intelligence and has a lot higher IQ than a normal person, emotionally he's an adolescent, and a lot of that has to do with the, all the shame that he associates with his sexuality, which doesn't really allow him to explore relationships like a normal grown man would because he's too afraid to love Alice because he feels like that's wrong of him and that it's not something that he should be able to do. Um, and then really one of the last main characters that we have is Norma, and that's his sister. And Charlie doesn't remember a ton about her at first, and then he starts to remember how Norma didn't really like him and she wouldn't want to play with him and she would um, be angry at him over different things and would just say a lot of hateful comments towards him. And one thing, though, is... He doesn't really have, he didn't really know her for very long because after he had grown up, he became estranged from his family and he didn't carry a relationship with them. He had no idea where they were, what they were doing with their lives. But he went back to visit all of his family members actually, but when he visited his father, he didn't tell him who he was. His father did not recognize him. But when he went to see Norma and Rose, um, uh, um, Norma did carry a conversation with him and she talked to him and it was good. Their interaction was good. But Rose had, um, she was delusional at first. She seemed okay with him. But then after she was very hateful and tried to attack him violently. And, um, when he left, it was not on a good note and he was crying and just remembering him as a small child, which really brought back a lot of, um, bad memories for him. And so then back to the plot throughout the book. We know that um, Charlie is starting to gain um, intelligence by the entries that he writes. You can see slowly just starting like with he starts spelling more words correctly. Then on one day just overnight it seems like he um, perfects punctuation and all of a sudden knows how to write grammatically correct. And that is evidence of his um, progression um, in the experiment. And then... Also, we start seeing that he's making more emotional connections with people, and not only with people, but events. He starts gaining insight on what's happening, and his opinions um, are changing and becoming more mature, as we see. But at the same time, he doesn't fully reach the full emotional maturity of an adult, even though he's incredibly smart. Um, and Algernon, as he's foreshadowing... Um, kind of what's going to happen to Charlie because at first we see that the mouse has become really smart but then slowly we see the mouse start to regress and lose intelligence and at that point Charlie along with the other people in the book slowly start to realize that the same thing was going to happen to him and that um it was kind of an inevitable fact that Charlie was going to revert back to his original state um of mental inability and um, a lot of people um, start to, you know, wonder how they had calculated wrong and try their minds and that, you know, it was an error, it's nobody's fault, and that they don't need to feel guilt about it, but that he um, was just going to try to learn as much as he could so that maybe he could, even if he was going to keep getting smarter, just maintain a sort of average intelligence. But um, however, we see that that is not possible because he st does continue to regress and he realizes this is happening and at that point um one particular person that he distanced himself from is Alice because he fell in love with her and they grew a strong emotional connection with each other and he said to her that he didn't want her to see him um in his former state and she mainly did not want these people around him to feel sorry for him that was really important to him 
that he would just go back to living his life the way it was and would um go to a ward if that was and um by the end of the book charlie had completely reverted back to his original state of mental inability and ignorance but um we can tell that he does have um some recollection of his time while he was undergoing the experiments um he says that he wished that he would be able to be smart again and that he would have that back but at the same time he realizes that that's not going to happen but um another thing that he does say though is that um he's happy that he got to experience um friendship and emotions and love and um from that we can just kind of gather that even though you know he wishes that things were different he does have a sense of satisfaction from everything that happened and he's definitely happy that it happened um even though it's hard for him to have gained all that then have it all taken away from him he's still gladdened by the fact that he got to experience all of those things um and then also we do see that he slowly starts forgetting the memories from his childhood and adolescent years that he had slowly gained but he starts to lose them again but um he does remember some things and oh no way that we know that he remembers things and got to experience like an emotional connection was at the very end of the book when he asked that flowers be laid on Algernon's grave and that just kind of stands as a reminder that um he does remember what happened during the experiment and that he still identifies with the mouse because in a lot of ways he sees that as being himself and he hopes that even after he um had lost his intelligence that people would still care about him in that way and still um think about him and look after him and not um go back to treating him the way that they had at the beginning of the book as just kind of an inhumane person not even a person more of like an object and so um that's another part of the book that I think is really important and that it's definitely not something that should be overlooked and something that I really like um I would definitely recommend that people read this book. I think that it's very interesting and it's something very different than a lot of things that you would read today that are just popular in our culture. I think that um, it's definitely um, a reminder that you should like care about people and no matter how they may seem to you because um, on the inside um, people, you, know, you never know what's going on and I also think that it just is definitely something that makes you think and I think that that's really important in any work that after you think and you pawn and you reflect on it and that in some way that it changes you or moves you and for me this book definitely did and I think that it would for the majority of people who read it and because of that I think it's definitely worth reading it's definitely worth someone's time and so I would recommend it um I think that the part that I really liked about it the most is that you were really um I was really able to identify with the character like on an emotional level because you are seeing everything that happens right through his eyes and even though um, at first you may not be able to really um, experience things like um, in the mature of a way that a lot of people could just emotionally you see him slowly that change and you see him start feeling and start caring and then you see that taken away from him which is really just a sad thing but um, it's just a really touching thing and it's an emotional thing but I love that you really got to see that through his eyes and see how he's feeling and they um because it allowed you just to connect with him and really understand what's going on in the book um for him and then also you know for the people around him the way that he viewed it so I would definitely read it I think it's um a great book um definitely worth um anyone's time so yeah thanks for watching